That's right. Welcome to the side of the ring because it's time for ringside. Got a bunch of news lined up for you, ladies and gentlemen. So further do it. At 4W Online's Dave Meltzer says Bray Wyatt was, quote, on the list at one point for the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2024, but that's no longer part of WWE's play. However, Meltzer is under the impression that Bray, quote, will be put in soon. Okay, hear me out. I don't think Bray not going into the Hall of Fame is the end of the world, okay? Now, hear me out. I think that even if they don't put him into the Hall of Fame, they're not going to do nothing, right? Like, that's my main point, is that they're not just going to have... Not, Bray not in the Hall of Fame, no tribute show, nothing. I'm, I'm fairly certain that well, he's either going into the Hall of Fame or they're going to do a tribute show or they're going to do both. Not like a tribute show, but you know what I mean. Um, they're going to like have something, you know, planned out for him at WrestleMania or something. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they are just going to put him in the Hall of Fame, you know. Um, but I wouldn't put it past him to do, you know, both. So I feel like if not, then he's obviously, you know, going to be... What's the word? Featured and in some capacity of the show, so we'll have to wait and see what they actually end up doing. Next, Fightful's NXT sources were skeptical about Booker T's claim that he and CM Punk almost had a backstage altercation at this week's taping. The sources weren't aware of any confrontation taking place, security wasn't aware of a confrontation, and there was no talk of a backstage incident between Punk and Booker T. The people that Fightful spoke to were frustrated about Booker T making this claim about Punk, especially, quote, given Punk's history with backstage altercations. It was reiterated that CM Punk had not had any backstage issues since he returned to WWE. He has genuinely been helpful behind the scenes and was in good spirits this week at NXT. So I assume that this is a work of some kind because I don't understand why Booker T would do this, right? Knowing that there's like evidence obviously pointing to the fact that he's not telling the truth. So he wouldn't just, you know, come out and say this. I feel like, I don't know, this, if you're going to say that this is him going into business for himself, it's, a, that's an odd thing to do now, right? Um, he is coming back though in two weeks if you remember he's coming back to chicago of all places so like maybe booker t will come out i don't know if that's what he's insinuating here i have no idea so far it seems like it's gonna be uh punk and mcintyre i don't know when that's taking place but uh mcintyre's definitely been you know uh keeping that hot on the stove but booker t just kind of coming out of left field and doing this seems a bit odd and then for everyone to be like no no no, everything's fine it just sort of makes it even more confusing of why book would do it so unless th listen this needs to culminate to something because if not this is very strange Moving over to AEW, Sean Ross Sapp was told there will be more focus on the AEW women's division now that Mercedes Monet is on the roster. It sounds like there will be a Mercedes segment in addition to the normal women's segment on the TV shows. But why does Mercedes have to be like the front runner? Why does it have to specific? Listen, love Mercedes, love her. Th theme song's a bit hypnotic. Theme song, theme song makes you feel like you gotta like, you know, do it or else. Um, but bro, other than that, I have absolutely no problem with her whatsoever. I don't like that Tony himself is sort of putting her at the front of all of this and being like, hello, this is now the reason why we are going to start, you know, emphasizing the women's division. Because do you remember way back when Fallout 76 came out and they put like a day one patch or whatever? It was like a patch came in and like people were like, okay, cool, there's a patch in. And then they started reading what was actually added and they were like, hang on a second, this wasn't in the game? You know what I mean? It's that realization of like, hang on a second, like, why all of a sudden? Why are you? Why are we talking about this now? You know, like this. this you know, this this, def, this should have been going on for like ages now. You should have like started doing this like way sooner. You know, and uh, I I feel like there's people out there that look at the women's division in AEW and say that could do with some improving, right? And I feel like that conversation has been going on for a while. So for. Tony, and I talked about this already, man, where I'm like, I don't understand how Mercedes, all of a sudden, Tony Khan realizes, oh my god, Mercedes is a woman, I have women on my roster, I should use them in wrestling, like, what are we doing here, you know, listen, look, uh, what's it, Rising Tide, uh, raises all boats, listen, it, this just means more women's matches, more emphasis on storylines, the title gets more value to it, fine, because at that point, I'd just be yelling at clouds, so, we're just... I, let's just see what happens. Moving back to WWE, one of the women's stars in WWE told the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that they heard Monet is now, quote, the highest paid woman in pro wrestling. The WWE star is thrilled about Monet's deal because it creates a better market for the top women wrestlers in the industry. 
When you're playing Wrestling Empire, right? I need you to follow me on this. When you're playing Wrestling Empire, you can uh, make contracts for the wrestlers on your roster. And you can choose how long they stay and the clauses that go into their uh, uh, their contracts, right? And you can see how long they stay. And there's a feature in the game where if not even all of them, like if you, let's say you have someone on the roster who has like 5,000 a, uh, a week, cause it goes weekly. So for like five grand a week, right? And then someone on the roster is like two grand a week. He will come to you and he will be like, hey, I'm not getting paid as much as him. That's not fair. I want to be getting paid as much as that guy. And as the booker, you either have to say, all right, that's fair. Here you go. You can get the same amount of money as he does. Or you can say, no, you have to honor your contract. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I just, listen, I've I've been watching wrestling for a long time. I, I, I feel like you and I, we know a lot about the behind the scenes. There's... There's, there's evident, there's history of wrestlers being unhappy with their contracts and, and what have you, right? So I wouldn't put it past certain, I, cause I don't want to say all of them, cause that wouldn't make sense. I wouldn't put it past some wrestlers in the AEW women's locker room to be like, well, how come I'm not getting paid that much? Or, you know, th- it, w- like, I feel like her getting paid that much money is shining a spotlight down on all the other women saying, hey, I value this wrestler (laughs) way more than I do them. And maybe I'm just looking at it from a cynical standpoint. And if I am, then I apologize. But it's what I it's it's just what I'm thinking. And I'm not saying that any of this is true. I'm just saying that it's a particular perspective that I'm taking on it. Right. So. It could all really be nothing, which I love saying because nine times out of ten, that's usually what it is, right? So I'm sure everyone on the roster, you're like, I'm sure you go to locker room and you're like, are you okay with this? And was like, yeah, absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with it. I understand. Just a little bit worried about the disparity, right? I hope I use that properly. Finally, WWE is considering changes to their PLE pre-shows that could be implemented this year per PW Insider Elite. WWE said is to be looking at ESPN College Game Day as a model and hoping that kickoffs feature more quote live, high energy, free flowing discussion about events and big matches. So if you don't watch sports, um, imagine like a big desk and then you've got like Wade Barrett, Booker T, Kathy Kelly, or Kayla Braxton and then like, I don't know, Pete Rosenberg right? Uh, is that his name, Peter Rosenberg? I can't remember. Either way. Or Sam Roberts or something, right? And then behind them is just a big, 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 big crowd of people. They got signed beach balls. You're right. They're, they're going nuts. They're losing their minds. And then they're just rattling off the matches, you know. Um, they've been doing, they've, they've been doing a lot of that lately, and I re- I like it. I listen. I like it. It's giving it a, it's giving it a very, like, particular flavor, and I'm here for it. They're like one step away from bringing back the photographers and 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 really like turning this into as, as close as to a real sport as they possibly can. Because you, they're doing the thing. Because, you know, again, if you don't watch sports, in football and basketball, they like to uh, get shots of the players or the athletes coming in to the stadium luggage, you know, decked out in the wildest outfit you've ever seen. Um, they've been doing that with the wrestlers a lot, you know. Um, and you can tell that that's the direction that they're trying to go in. So I, I, that's what that's what I'm expecting. The desk and the you know outside, out front of the stadium, got the microphones and stuff like that. Or like they're in the stadium and they're like standing up. Um, they, they so far there's no halftime type deal, which I would understand, um, unless you count like one of the backstage segments as one. But you know I, I doubt that they're going to do anything like that. But they've been really good with their exclusives, their backstage exclusives, and. Um, what else? Yeah, like I said, the bump. Yeah, so they've really been, you know, uh, getting, what's it, like, you know, like, forming a snowball, you know what I mean? Like, getting a bunch of rubber bands, putting them all together, making a big rubber band ball. That's That seems like what they're doing uh, right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they've been doing it before. I mean, they've been doing the whole, what's it, like, pregame stuff for, like, a while now, but it sounds like they're going to go, like, way more in-depth with it, so can't wait to see what it looks like. What do we talk about? So nine times out of 10, they're going to put Bray Wyatt in the Hall of Fame. I don't doubt that they're going to do that. But uh, I also feel like they're going to do something. I feel like they're going to do something else. I don't know if they will, but I feel like they're going to put him in the Hall of Fame and then uh, maybe like a tribute or or some, I don't know, some type of memorial of some type. So we'll have to wait and see if they do that. I don't know why Booker T yelled at Punk, right? Um, 
I love that Booker T yelled at Punk and then everyone went, no, you didn't, right? I love that. So that's why I'm, I am, I'm, I'm begging on my hands and knees that something happens from this. Otherwise, Booker T is just gonna look crazy. So, uh, okay. Lord, okay. I don't know why, did, why is there focus on the women's division now? That doesn't make any sense, right? And I'm worried that there are going to be people on the AEW women's roster who are going to feel less valued than Mercedes Monet, right? Who are at least going to look at this and take notice, right? Bombastic side eye, you know? I could be wrong, and if I am, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't... What am I trying to say here? I would be surprised. No, that's not true. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't know. What am I trying to say? I wouldn't put it past the women, not all of them, to be upset. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, and they're doing more, they want to do more, like, pre-show stuff, like, uh, the football and the basketball and what have you, like I said, with the announced desks and everything like that. So, listen, I'm here for it. I love the way it looks, and I love the, the direction that they're going in, so I'm excited for how it'll turn out. Folks, that's gonna do it. Hopefully, everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow, and as always, big hugs! Big hugs all around.